This is the Daily Tech News Show for Wednesday, December 30th, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. From Canada, I'm Jen Cutter on my Christmas set. <laughs> from Studio Colorado, I'm Shannon Morse. And from the Podfeed Podcast, I'm Allison Sheridan. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. If you think this collection of people seems familiar, that's because this is our end of 2020 predictions results episode. Each one of these people on this show made predictions at the end of 2019 for what kind of technology stories we would see in 2020. And now we look back on the predictions we made and see how they actually turned out. We thank all of you for your bravery. <laughs> because <laughs> oh, man yeah. this year more than most was very unpredictable i feel yeah who had who had massive worldwide virus on their bingo card not me didn't have that yes darn it darn no. it I, yeah. you know, I was gonna but i didn't yeah. Shouldn't yeah. Have, uh, december uh, shall... 2019 what a Long time ago, that uh, was. We were such springtime children then. No idea what we were in for. Starry-eyed optimism. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Well, let, let's look back at, on, on what these younger versions of ourselves were thinking. Uh, Scott Johnson, let's start with you. Your first prediction from 2019, what was it? Well, I'm a little, I'll be honest, I've done this a few times now, and I'm a little surprised how much I nailed it with my two predictions. So I'm just going to gloat a little at the top here and just say how proud I am of this. No, also, ahead. I I will admit they're low points. They're they were low hanging fruit, easy predictions to make. I think they were kind of 50 50 or maybe better. But anyway, I predicted first of all that the VR market share would continue to grow for Oculus in particular, that they would begin to sort of dominate the space and they would have a smaller, faster Quest Two out in late 2020. What did happened. you know, Scott Johnson? <laughs> I know. And when did know? I know it? Uh, yeah, I was, I'm, uh, I guess I'm not surprised. My name that called the Quest 2. Although <laughs> in our notes, you we have a Roman numeral instead of the numeral 2. That's oh, true. And that's which really I, only half a point then, right? Greg, yes, exactly. <laughs> I still think it looks cooler. I like two. I like a double two or a double I more than I like a two. But my, my thing that I didn't get right or didn't consider at the time is I was looking at Oculus Quest, the, the first Quest success as, all right, a thing that Facebook owns and helps fund, but really this is Oculus. This is just them untethered with all the resources they need to make a really cool thing. And I didn't know that in a year we would sour even more. Uh, when I say we, I don't mean us as a group, but you know the world would sour as a whole toward Facebook and they would be so criticized for inserting themselves into the Oculus side more in terms of branding and having to have a login now and all this other stuff. And I think it made that launch a tiny bit of a bummer for mm. the tech set maybe who are paying attention. But for the rest of the world, it's like, hey, VR, that seems neat. What's this new white looking Quest 2 thing I saw? Like, I, I still think that is a, a dominant platform and will continue to grow. But I didn't quite expect all the backlash because... Up till then, Facebook was kind of hands off, and now not so much. I don't know. I mean, I, yes, backlash for sure. But a year ago, I had never really played around with VR more than just you know a, a little demo at CES here and there. I got the Quest, the the well, I guess second gen first version Quest uh, that I played around with for a live with it segment uh, mid year. And loved it, still love it. Um, so I'm still, I'm still not rocking the Quest 2, but the the original Quest form factor. But a year ago, when you said this, I was like, yeah. I mean, whatever. It's kind of one of those things that until you have one, you don't realize how great it is. And I was definitely one of those people who, when I when I finally got it and started playing around, I was like, oh, this is way cooler than I thought it was going to be. I don't know what I was thinking, but you kind of just have to put one on your head. They're really and hard to demo until you put them on your head. You're yeah, right and yeah. and there are some less technically inclined folks that, you know, I was like, I promise you, you will love this. I promise, you know, and everyone says the same thing. It's like, oh, wow, now I get it. Yeah. So, yeah, that, you know, that I think the, the whole kind of coupling with Facebook is going to upset some people, but people who are just dipping their toe into VR have been really pleasantly pleasantly surprised and oculus has become sort of the household name for vr yeah the year. other the only other thing i would complain about my prediction would be when i said smaller and faster i 
I meant more significantly so. It's really not mm. that much smaller and it's not that much faster. So I, if I was, you know, wishing more in my uh, prediction success, it would be that it would truly be, you know, we would we would get there quicker. We would make a bigger, more uh, exponential leap towards smaller wearable VR. And it didn't really do that. It's still sort of the same thing. It's lighter, sure, so technically smaller. The optics are a little better. And the chip's faster, but it's not, like, incredibly fast. So, yeah, if I'd have gotten that part right, I'd have felt better about maybe buying a 2. But uh, at this stage, I'm more like, eh, we'll see what they do with a 3 or a 4. Or, you know, I'll hang on to my first gen for a while. All right. What about your second prediction? Okay, so this one was even lower-hanging fruit. I said that Sony will have a strong launch for the PS5, but they'd be forced to do more in services, streaming, and PC ports to compete with Microsoft through 2020. And I still hold to that. And I think that the early weeks of launch for both consoles has started to prove that out a little bit. Um, Microsoft has had a better handle on back-end stuff like, these games are now capable for the next-gen console, so they're just going to roll in updates without you having to do anything. But on the Sony side, it's been more complicated. you got to download the original game and then patch it and then re-don't download another patch. And people with bandwidth caps have been complaining. They've had some bricked consoles early on. They don't really have a plan to compete with Game Pass. They just don't have a service that's to that level. I mean, Game Pass is ridiculous in terms of its value. Um, so I think we're at a point where Sony has to really dig in hard to compete on those levels. And Microsoft will start to see uh, a better turnout for themselves this run than they did last time around. Maybe still not in certain markets like Japan. Japan, for whatever reason, has been cold-shouldered to Microsoft in, since the beginning. So I don't think a big, strong uptick there. And Sony will do fine, but I do think this is shaping up to be that generation where the Series X and S, and services in particular, will end up uh, giving Microsoft the edge. And it'll take a few months to suss that out, though. Yeah, so that's kind, of a, that's kind of a, I was right and I still predict it. How about that? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm entirely for it. Uh, the one thing that Sony surprised me with was the PS Plus collection that they gave out for people for the free games on their 5 and 4. And uh, Sony's not big on giving away huge chunks of games like that. Uh, that was a really great start to make up for, let's say, a less than stellar array of launch titles. And I agree with you on absolutely everything else. I think you nailed it. Yeah. All right. Are we giving Scott full credit for this one? Yes, he I, he gets an A. Yeah. I think Tom, can I can I take a half a point of credit though on on Scott's first one because I asked for a half a point possibility on someone on DTNS who would say VR is in early days. And on February 22nd, Tom Merritt said VR is in its Commodore Amiga days. <laughs> Wait, good. wait, wait, way to bring out the receipts, Allison. <laughs> I know so, we're not, I know we're not on mine, but it's not listed. So I just didn't want anybody to forget that one. I thought maybe it would fit in here. So you want to pull a half point off of Scott because you got something right? I'm, I'm no, confused. She, <laughs> give, give Allison half a point when we get to her. Oh, oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, right. Scott still gets his two. Scott's still cool at two yeah. for two. All right. Yeah, it's uh, not a well it's done, not a, Scott. Yeah, you win 2020. You. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sarah Lane, uh, what's your first prediction from 2019 about this year? Well, I wasn't as successful as Scott. Uh, my first prediction yeah. was we would see the first deep fake in question in a court case, meaning someone says, I wasn't at that coffee shop when there was the shooting. And they say, but here we <laughs> there's a video of you here saying that you're there at the same time kind of thing. Something where experts would need to determine whether or not it's real in order to determine an outcome of a legal case. To my knowledge, this has not happened. I mean, I suppose it could have happened, but I think we would have heard about it. Um, the whole deep fake thing, I think maybe a year ago, I was thinking it was be going to become more of an issue than it has been. And listen, we went through an election year in the U.S. It's Certainly, you saw these sorts of things crop up, but they were pretty quickly shot down as that's clearly fake. Everyone knows it. So I don't think we're there yet. 
It's also I a love lot this of... prediction, though, Sarah. I thought this. I thought this was really in, uh, innovative in terms of predictions. And I think the problem is nobody went anywhere. So how could they have gone and robbed that that liquor store, right? Because <laughs> they couldn't leave their house. So I, I don't think this one's your fault. I think it was a fabulous prediction. It's also interesting too that you're not wrong about all the attempts that would occur during an election year because they did. But they ended up being a lot more traditional than deepfake. A lot of dumb Photoshop and crummy GIFs and, you know, the, that that stuff was on point. But it was all the kind of thing we're already doing, you know, misinformation the good old-fashioned way and not necessarily, you know, a video that was meant to be, to be real. It's almost like, and I could be wrong about this ultimately, but it's almost like deepfakes have deepfaked themselves into a corner to the point that we're all set to recognize it when something goes south. And we're all going to question it immediately. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we're ready for it and, and more ready for it than we thought. So maybe your prediction not exactly happening is actually, maybe it's a good thing. June 9th, uh, 2020, child custody battle in Britain. A woman said her husband was dangerous and she had the recording to prove it, except the husband's lawyer revealed that the woman using widely available software had doctored the audio to make Ooh. it sound like his client. Ooh. Okay. All right. There, yeah. Nailed it. There, yeah. I mean, that's deep fake enough, right? And it was in audio. Case. Yeah. If it if it uh, was realistic enough. Okay. I'm, so I uh, I am vindicated. Is it deep? Yeah. How deep is it? <laughs> it how deep is your yeah. fake? <laughs> ah, such a good show title for another day. Someone write that down. Uh, all right. So so what about your uh, second prediction? Second prediction, this was really based on my uh, personal hope that Apple would come out with VR glasses, uh, or AR glasses, I guess, would have been uh, the better way to put it this year. Didn't happen, but my prediction was, we're finally going to get a smart display eyeglass product that people don't hate. You know, Google Glass, okay, that was sort of first iteration uh did some great things, but didn't ultimately capture a consumer market. Snap spectacles still exist. Don't know anybody who uses them or wears them regularly. It's a niche product. Still cool, but not a mainstream thing. What like what is our smart display Apple Watch AR glasses thing? And I thought it was lofty. It was a it was a lofty guess that maybe Apple would give us that this year. They didn't. They gave me a nice M1 MacBook Air, so I'm not mad. But yeah, this didn't happen. Wow. Not that companies haven't been iterating on this. They continue to. Yeah, there's been a lot of attempts this year, right? Yeah. It wasn't for lack of trying. There's been all kinds of different companies coming out with with eyeglass products, but none of them caught on. None of them caught on, and we're we're still in those early days, I suppose. And I think this we're going to get there. Although at this point, I'm like, you know, it probably makes more sense to uh, bundle this technology into you know contacts or something, so that people don't have to wear glasses and unless they specifically want to. I don't know. I think I think we'll get there. Didn't happen in 2020. Now, Roger didn't put this in our doc, so I, I don't know if he was trying to silence you, but the doc from last year said Baby Yoda would get a plushie and become the hottest selling toy of all time. <laughs> this, is, this, is my <laughs> this is my third prediction. It was kind of one that I threw out, and I and just goes to show you how long this year has been, because I'm like, wait, Baby Yoda was happening in December of 2019, because that's why I would have been thinking about it, and it was like new and cool and everything. Yeah, yeah. So whether or not uh, this year has seemed long or short, it's you know time is a flat circle. But Baby Yoda, I had predicted would be would get a plushie, you know, it's like a Mattel toy or something like that, and become the hottest selling toy of all time. Now I'm not exactly wrong. There's not one yeah. particular product that you know that ran away with last year's Christmas season. And that's kind of where I was going because we were doing this last December. There are a lot of plushy Yoda, Baby Yoda toys, though. There are. Mm -hmm. There are. Yeah. yeah. Look at it. Allison's even, even got a knit version of him herself. Yeah. Yeah. A fan named Leslie Passman made this one for me. So I think it counts. Oh, that is yeah. so cute. That that's is mostly plushier what you're than ever. Get. I love it. That's, that's mostly what you're going to get because Disney's been slow to actually make a lot of merch. There's Baby that Yoda really... love is decentralized. 
Yeah. Well, Technically, and, that, and that was the whole thing, had... right? Last year, Scott, is that Disney didn't realize, oh, gosh, this was mm-hmm. a big marketing missed opportunity because people went nuts for them. What yep. were you going to say, Shannon? There were some baby Yodas that sold out at Disneyland. Uh-huh. So, oh, that's right. In, in a sense, it was the hottest toy at Disneyland. Certainly, so you could certainly. say in that way. <laughs> All right. All right. Back. All right. So, so no go on Google Glass. But what are? How are we ruling on the deep fake and the baby Yoda? I say she should get the deep fake. Right. Maybe an extra quarter point for the baby Yoda because of the Disneyland angle. Yeah, I mean Sounds the the, me. the problem with the deep fake is uh, not the problem, but you usually think of it as a video related thing. That's how people are positioning it these days, but. Technically, it's true. Like it's a technically, and I, I, I definitely did think of it in video sense, but mm. I will take my points. Yeah. Now, when I went back to check uh, Allison's claim of a third prediction that wasn't in our doc, I, I found the baby Yoda. I also found Scott. You had said people will be able to get a permanent temporary tattoo in 2020. Yeah, I couldn't have been more wrong about that. Um, so also you that- don't have a perfect record. I, 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 how much were you paying Roger to suppress these other picks? Well, oh. I, I was paying him very little, and in the year 2020, it wasn't enough. So uh, I, I uh, could, I could have gotten paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> You have to remind me what a permanent temporary tattoo is. So my idea was, okay, so I saw this thing. Actually, I think it was on Disney Plus. I think speaking of the Mandalorian, where they were talking about a technology that they were working on. They're not there yet, but a way to do tattoos that were 100% like a legit tattoo that a machine a lot like a 3D printer would give you. And then a year later, if you're like, you know what? I don't, I'm not dating that guy anymore. I want to take his name off my arm or whatever. <laughs> you could do it, and you could do it easily and simply with that same machine, and you could either go back to nothing or replace it with a new tattoo. So and I'm permanent, still convinced that's coming. Yeah. Yeah, basically yeah. reversible without the current reversible, which is horrible yeah. laser surgery and awful grafting and all that. I think so. the reason Roger didn't put these third picks in is you were only supposed to have two picks each. And so right. it was a it was a penalty for breaking the rules. Uh, let's see what Jen Cutter did last year. Uh, Jen, what was your first prediction? Um, I feel like I should apologize to the world for this. Uh, I had predicted that this would be the year esports investors and sponsors start kind of questioning their <laughs> ROI, <laughs> resulting in events getting canceled and you know teams being penalized, you consolidating. This. You know, whoops. What <laughs> did you, you know, Jen? Right. What, what, and when? Wow. Um, yeah, so this is not how I saw a change in <laughs> esports going down. <laughs> uh, thankfully, like to argue against my own case here a little bit, uh, some esports did actually manage to have a pretty good year and fill the gap created by the complete and utter lack of real sports for a while. Uh, like for racing, 1.3 oh, yeah. million people checked out that NASCAR race online, which had just as much drama as an actual NASCAR race. So they had that going for them. But other communities, like the fighting game community, they were hit really hard this year. Uh, In-person events are kind of huge, and moving it to online, well, there's kind of a short list of games that have acceptable netcode for high-level play. And what got hit the hardest this year were venues. Uh, The big esports place in Toronto could not make it. Who can survive an entire year with zero revenue? Because you know, the whole thing that they were selling was the in-person experience, and that's yeah. really hard to deliver. What kind of a world are we in where Jen's trying to talk us out of giving your credit <laughs> for this one? It's like, no, no, I don't want this one. Can you cut me back to a half a point or something? <laughs> yeah, I just, I feel brutal about that call. I, I honestly thought it would be just more like, yeah, the rich right. people get got bored and left, but no, like the investments are kind of picking up again, but like this year for esports was was still i think mostly a dark year but they'll be more resilient for it yeah what about your second pick uh my second one i kind of swung hard and uh yeah i said google stadia would do a bit better in 2020 that sounds soft i know but i also said that google would come up with and launch successfully launch a new feature they hadn't talked about yet so the free trial that they had is still good and a lot of people took advantage of that during this time when we're all kind of stuck at home looking for something to do. Uh, And judging by my feed, a lot of people forgot to cancel that free trial (laughs) as they were all complaining when it got hit. Um, They're giving away free stuff. It's finally coming to iOS. 
Uh, Cyberpunk's available on it. Crowd Choice went live, so like people can tell their streamers what they want to do. And then finally, earlier this month, Crowd Play launched in beta, so that you can actually like get in line to play with your favorite streamers, who of course have to be streaming on YouTube and have this enabled. But I can't take any credit for any of this because this is all stuff they talked about launching in 2019 and they just right. kind of got around to it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you were yeah. predicting there was something they hadn't mentioned before. Yeah, right? I thought for sure, like, hey, they know the other consoles are launching this year. Surely, surely they have something up their sleeve to try to compete with that. But no, <laughs> nothing, not even rumors of something. Just, yeah, more games are coming. I'm like, yeah, okay, great. That's the whole point of a console. <laughs> <laughs> That groundbreaking. That was the easy part. Yeah. Uh, and then you too had a third prediction, I uh, it did. seems, about uh, Canada's regulations for social media platforms. Yeah. And yeah. I think it maybe would have happened this year, barring, you know, mm, everything, everything else. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm happy the government focused on stuff like CERB so that, you know, we didn't go all, all broke in our homes earlier this year. Um, what did eventually happen or is currently happening because it went through second reading is we have this bill C10 to kind of redo the licensing of the Canadian broadcast standards in Canada. And it's this huge omnibus bill. And my prediction was that we were going to have the social media laws kind of like Europe had. We didn't quite get there because we're working on this other law first. And it is laughable, <laughs> which was my prediction, that it would be so bad, it would be torn apart, and then the government would have to walk it back. And that's kind of what we're doing right now to build C10. But mm. that doesn't actually cover the social media companies. So, like, we just, we haven't gotten there this year. It got backburnered. It's looking like late 2021 before we have our own specific social media law. Do you want to make this one for next year, then? <laughs> 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 sure, like hopefully let it ride more back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how are we how are we uh, gonna score Jen here? Are we giving her one out of three? Is that we're we're gonna have to give her the one she didn't want, right? Yeah, a regretful one out of three. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jen. Oh uh, well. All right. Well, let's move on then uh, to Shannon. Shannon, what was your first prediction from last year? Uh, so the first one I had was that ransomware would evolve and become harder to protect against. And I also thought that ransomware would still depend on large scale on phishing attacks or tactics, but we would start to see customized ransomware made for specific sectors. And I feel that I got this one 100% correct on all of those different factors for that one prediction. So the first part was becoming harder to protect against, and yes, they did evolve. In fact, a great example of that would be TrickBot, uh, which recently evolved to have 100 different versions, um, which includes ransomware, and they have been focusing on specific sectors. So that would be an excellent example of one that has been very hard to protect against to the point where Microsoft even tried to take down IPs for their centralized servers, and it's still growing. So that's an active attack that's currently happening. So that's a great example. Um, ransomware, depending a large scale on phishing attacks, phishing is still a very, very popular way for ransomware to get in. Um, one example would be the healthcare sector. There are state sponsored attackers who have been targeting healthcare and pretending to be like CEOs of companies and sending phishing emails in order for people to open attachments for like invoices and stuff like that. So that's still a thing to this very day and humans have not learned yet. <laughs> and then lastly, of course, we would see customized. Can you put ever uh, at the end of that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> ever. Yeah, I know, right? Humans will never learn. <laughs> we are our worst enemy when it comes to security and privacy. Um, and of course, customized ransomware made for specific sectors. Um, healthcare was a huge one this year, which I didn't even think of healthcare in December of last year, but I was thinking more uh, industrial, like infrastructure, uh, power plants and things like that. But it ended up being healthcare was the biggest one that we saw a lot of ransomware um, starting to spur up and starting to attack different uh, different hospitals and different organizations, a even to the point now where we're seeing attacks on um, uh, cold storage and cold transportation of COVID vaccines uh, from state-sponsored hackers. So it's definitely a huge deal. And s even though I wasn't thinking of the healthcare 
uh, infrastructure, it, it definitely ended up being that way. So yeah, that one was right. <laughs> high, high difficulty level to get, th to put out three parts and get all three right. Yeah. In, in, entirely crazy. I was not expecting that, but that's how it worked out. But my second prediction was completely wrong. <laughs> and I thought this one would be the one that was correct. Uh, I said legitimate hacks on connected election systems would happen like voting machines, and they would be implemented during the election season and recorded and investigated. So I specifically spoke to recorded and investigated because I figured if this was to happen, we would need some kind of public facing information about this so that we could report on it. And it, as a matter of fact, the government, the US government came out, came out, different agencies, and they said that there weren't any major attacks on election infrastructure during the election season, uh, which now in hindsight makes sense given that a lot of companies like Dominion, for example, who has been in the news quite a bit lately, uh, they created a bug bounty system earlier this year for uh, different cybersecurity professionals to help them strengthen their machines. And they have done so. So I thought that one, we would definitely see hacks. We didn't see any. So I definitely well, got that one wrong. You were right in December last year that the fear was that this was going to happen. And I think what happened is so many people were thinking along the same lines that people finally took it seriously and actually worked to combat it in, Which in is multiple great. ways, right? Yeah. So I'm actually I'm, glad I got that wrong. Yeah. I have to imagine most people involved in that industry had to have been so mindful of that. Where It reminds me of the 2K bug thing that turned out to be nothing hardly for a lot of people. But everybody, nobody wanted to be that group that was not prepared. Yeah. <laughs> and this is like the biggest election. It's all this stuff, all this hubbub. There's no way they wanted to be that company. And so maybe those attacks were attempted and nothing worked because everybody prepped. So maybe we were both right and wrong at the same time. Well, if we're going to blame Jen for esports going in the toilet <laughs> because of the prediction and the way it happened, then then Shannon gets credit for none mm -hmm. of the systems in, right. in the election. Thank being you, hacked. Shannon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for no your problem. service. Happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy I was able to protect our election system this year. <laughs> you are so By welcome. stoking yeah. fear, you have saved us. Thank you. True American. Well done. And All right. And then you had a third one. You also broke the rules and had a third one. By what the way, before she gets to that, I don't I think we were all told pick three, we may only get through two. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. think we all broke all the rules. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or it was that, or it was like pick an outlandish one, maybe we'll use it, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, like right, what's right. the one that if we that get sounds, to? That sounds right. Uh, what was your third one that we did get to? Um, I don't even know if this is really outlandish, but I said foldable screen phones will go down in price, and we will see a newly released one on the market for as little as $1,000 USD. And I want to mention... I kind of got this right because I didn't necessarily say in. under the wire. I didn't necessarily say in my prediction that it would be right at release. I just said newly released. So the Motorola Razor 5G, originally it started in October when it was released around $1,399 and we saw it go down to $1,199. And on December 8th, <laughs> if you purchased it through Verizon, you could get it for nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Oh, so does that count? Pam? Uh, does it count? Uh, that <laughs> totally counts. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. If, that, if that was so a price, that was a price. Yeah, There's nobody's agree. buying it, so they have to drop the price, and it ends up in the bargain basement thousand dollar phone category. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the phone did go down in price, and it, it was newly released it's this year. Only two yeah. months old. <laughs> Newly released, and it is obtainable for less than a grand. Oh, I think and that you counts. don't have to trade in a phone, but you do have to get a service with Verizon. So I'll leave this one up to you guys. Yeah. I, think, I think this is a yes, because, All right. because Shannon didn't say the foldable phone will be released and it'll be the mega hit of 2020. She just said, <laughs> this is going to happen and it's going to be sub $1,000. Yeah. If you're a living constitutionalist, you might think Shannon is wrong. But if you're an originalist, you're going to go like, <laughs> look, these are the words she wrote in December 2019. Right. Uh, so, we're, so we're giving Shannon two out of three. All, All right. right. We got a yes, yeah. no, yes. y'all. Well Good done. Work. That technically ties her with Scott. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Remember, that would we do correct like that. is that... the best kind of correct. <laughs> We could have a All little right, esport Allison. right now and fight it out. No, that's not true. That's Allison, not true. you already told us about your third one. Uh, VR yeah. is in early days, which I, I mean, there, there might need to be an investigation of whether you paid me to say it, but I definitely did say it. <laughs> it only, it only took until February. By the way, if I'm on the next prediction show, I would like to just say it again next year because it's going <laughs> to happen playing. every single year. Uh, All right. But what about your first real prediction? Remember the old days when I, I swept them and I got them all right? Well, uh, last year, Tom held a gun to my head to pick harder predictions. And uh, so I'm going to blame him for the, my complete failure. Uh, I said that Amazon will get into wearables with a smart watch with the A-Lady in it. And I said, I didn't think they'd call it Firewatch, maybe Echo Watch. And they I did release Halo. Is that a is that a watch? Does it I have looking. time on it though? <laughs> oh, but I said. Well, you know, I, said, I mean, know. smart band. Right. I tell you what I time it is. Counts. Yeah, if you ask it, it'll tell you. Right. That's true. <laughs> I, I love that. I can't see it. I have to ask her. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> so it's just accessible, is all you're saying, right? <laughs> right. You might be technically correct. Is that what you're going for there? Well, and I think uh, Shannon just said it beautifully a minute ago that technically corrects the best kind of correct. <laughs> I think it was Jen, maybe. Was oh, Jen said yeah. that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I I think we'll have to go to the judges on this one. Uh, does the halo count for Allison's prediction? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I I do yeah. consider it I, a wearable. I think what you were thinking of, Allison, it did not come to fruition. But I think. You get a pass. Yeah, you got a you got a technicality yeah. point. Yeah. Because yeah. because you can ask it. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate the generosity of the judges, uh, and I'm glad I was nice to you guys a few minutes ago. So that had, <laughs> <laughs> could have turned out very differently. Because I searched everywhere for did Amazon come out with a smartwatch with a lady. I mean, they came up with out with everything. I mean, I think my toothbrush has has a lady in it now. So yeah, I couldn't yeah. believe there wasn't a watch. Okay, so the next one was where Tom made me go. Uh, he made me dig deep on this one. What I said originally was Apple will come out with a new health feature on Apple Watch that's not as amazing as blood sugar, but more useful than the decibel measurement. Mm -hmm. And you said, yeah, nice. You got to tell us what it's going to be. And so I went with epilepsy. Now, I sure wish I'd said O2 saturation because they <laughs> did come out with that. They did come out with something we needed, but they did not come out with epilepsy. They actually came out with fewer new watch health features than they usually do, right? There had been a, a string of like EKG and stuff like that. And this year, the O2 thing was, uh, at least in my opinion, not as 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 big of a like ooh like yeah as it was with the EKG or the the pulse or monitor detection and all. Yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of the other stuff was stuff nobody had done but but uh, I think Samsung had already done the O2 saturation mm -hmm. long before Apple did it so that wasn't exactly groundbreaking but it is more useful than decibel measurement man that decibel <laughs> measurement goes up every time Sawyer the dog barks <laughs> <laughs> and it's right he is very loud. Uh, so, uh, we're going with two out of three for Allison. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? All, right. I think so. All right. We got a three way tie. The then. Yeah. Uh, that brings you to my predictions. Uh, my first one, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, I'll let y'all decide. Uh, I said there would be a push for limits on data science because the GDPR was all about collection, but didn't say anything about data processing and profiling. Uh, model transparency, or holding data scientists accountable for the consequences of their work. The closest we got was Europe proposing, and remember I said a push, didn't have to be passed, uh, proposing new legislation aimed at creating an EU-wide data marketplace for industrial and government information, which is essentially where most of the data science happens. Mm. <laughs> This one's I mean, are are you wanting us to say yes, Tom? You got this one. I mean, well, of course I do. Uh, <laughs> but like in a wishful thinking way or a no, I got this right. Thing. I really was yeah. thinking it would be more about data processing and, and, and saying like, look, if a data scientist, you know, pushes forward on this sort of thing, they'll be accountable. But this is like halfway into what I was talking about, this industrial stuff. I'm going to I'm going to push for a half point. Do I get a half credit? Uh yes. I'll definitely go half half. Yeah. Point. 
right. If we can do increments, five. you get half for sure. Point right. five right. for Pat on the back. Uh, the next one is even more of a stretch. <laughs> uh, this was my my bolder prediction. I said Apple will buy a live streaming video service, and I used DAZN, Fubo, and Philo as potential uh, targets. Apple did buy a company that broadcasts sports and music, Next VR, <laughs> which is <laughs> not at all what I meant. I meant for Apple TV Plus, uh, they bought a live streaming VR company. They, they do NBA and Wimbledon and stuff. Uh, and they but, live stream? And they live stream. They yeah. live stream. And it's yeah. video. Mm. Just because it doesn't have a made up sounding name like Daz and Fubo and, and Philo. <laughs> I see that as a full point. Why wouldn't that be? Oh, Allison, how much do I owe you? <laughs> we didn't, it's, it's, specifically those, you said like one of those. It it. I think this is a point. This really? Is a okay. Point. This is what I felt. I mean, you. Yeah, you didn't necessarily think of it this way, but it fits. Yeah, I agree. Like we right. we gave and, a point for someone thinking of a thing that or that turned out different than they yeah, thought. Yeah. All right. But all right. It still worked. Okay, uh, we're all originalists here. Good. I like well, that. and Apple still didn't put other stupid glasses to use next VR's technology, <laughs> which would have given me another point, but that's supposed to Right. Be if they just put out something, yeah. You know, it's just it's in early days, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. 2021. Come on. Now, uh I uh there is a third one written here. A virus will cause a lot of trouble. Hold on. Let me look that at the was it there. History. Yeah, no, this was literally added. Well, the problem is I wrote it in last year's doc two weeks ago, but. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Before there was a virus that caused any trouble. So I don't think I get any, any credit for that. Uh, what was funny is I, I wrote it in there as a joke because I knew Roger was going to be going in and looking at these uh -oh. uh, th to make the new doc. And uh, we were talking about it earlier today. Was Sarah, was it you that was like, you would think it would mean a computer virus? Yeah. I mean, if you would have said a virus would cause a lot of trouble, oh. December of 2019, we all might have been like, eh, probably. Yeah. yeah. So prediction. if I had but said would have that, thought about it in a, you know, a, a, a virtual sense. If I yeah. had said that it meant computer virus, but didn't make it clear, would I have got credit for it? <laughs> That's sort of the opposite of technically correct. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know. If, I, I mean, like... what does it say about us that we can all chuckle about this? Like, ha, ha, uh, ha. What I'll tell you what it says, Sarah. My mother always said to me, you got to laugh because we're too old to cry. Oh, yeah. that's not yeah. bad. <laughs> or, you do the, or you do the craft, I like to call it, where you're crying and also laughing. Oh, you're like, oh can't the kind of crap, yeah. 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 My like grandma that. used to say, the good ain't forever, but the bad ain't for good. Oh, I like that, too. <laughs> Yeah, my that could be your next you make a better door than a window. <laughs> a door than a window. <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to say, I'll cut you off too short to hang up, but I never understood what that even meant. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. <laughs> That's my just wordplay. Get out of my room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, how do y'all feel about your predictions? We had, we had several two out of threes here. Good. Feeling pretty good. Yeah. I think we we finished strong there, and I, I yeah, feel yeah. I feel bad for Jen, but uh, I think she she nailed it. Esports is making a comeback. I think next year will be good. I really do think next year will be good. Whether it's good physically or not, I don't know yet. But the, all the online leagues are going pretty well, and there's tons of stuff to watch. You also could open maybe a a a, a psychic shop. Right. And just be like, I kind of am good at this. You want to know the Well, future? I don't know if one out of three is, is enough of a hit rate, but I also don't know how actual psychics do it. So, so maybe better, it is a good hit honestly. rate. Yeah, yeah. Right. You yeah. know, it is kind of ironic that something called electronic sports was hit so badly. Right. Yeah. You would have thought that would be the one that did really well. Right. It's, right. It's it's because they count on it being so much of an analog to real sports, not real sports in the negative sense, but you know what I mean. Like we like the arenas, we like Traditional shouting, we sports, like the maybe we mm -hmm. like the foam things, the we like spectacle. making a lot of noise. Yeah. Yeah. The spectacle of it is not there this time. So, just slowed things down. I agree with Jen. That's gonna make plenty I mean, of a listen, comeback. they put cardboard cutout people in baseball stadiums. They can do it for esports. Yeah. Thanks, and they right. used Get video on the game ball. cheering sounds for a while, which right. was just right. weird, but they tried. <laughs> Bless their hearts. <laughs> uh, well, folks, uh, 
listen, thank you so much for being willing to come back and confront your predictions uh, from last year. Uh, let's let everybody know where they can find more of what you do. Shannon Morse, starting with you. Uh, Twitter.com slash snubs. That's where you can always get in touch with me or share your own predictions if you want to share those with me, as well as YouTube.com slash Shannon Morse is where I put out all of my content creator content about tech. <laughs> content. Contact. Uh, Scott Johnson, what about yourself? Well, frogpants.com is always a place to find all the shows and everything else I have going on. So if you're looking for art, comics, uh, podcasts, uh, 15 years of content, it's all there. Uh, frogpants.com. Allison Sheridan, where can people find you? Well, if you're looking for the fine Podfeet podcast, you can go to podfeet.com. And Jen Cutter, what about you? Uh, the best place is still Twitter, which is at Jen Cutter. That's Jen with two N's. And for 2021, for a not actual prediction, but a goal, I'm going to try to use Instagram more because I hate photos and I need to get over that. So Instagram is also at Jen Cutter, and you can come see what I'm up to there. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, thanks to everyone for helping support the show out there. We could not have done it without you. We love patrons that stick with us. That's why we're happy to offer Patreon loyalty rewards you can get a unique sticker, mug, T-shirt, or hoodie every three months, as long as you stay a patron. Used to be you got it after three months, and then that was it, unless we came out with something new. But each one has a unique art from Len Peralta, featuring the DTNS seven-year anniversary logo, as well as Roger in one of them, Sarah in one of them, myself in one of them. Get the details at patreon.com slash DTNS. If you'd like to send us feedback, we'd love to have it. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We are live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we'll see you tomorrow for the last show of 2020 with our tech predictions for 2021. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>